All right, what's going on? This is TK from Comic Sire and the Gulf Coast CW. We're out here at Gamers and Geeks, the Horror Con, day one with JJ Cohen, great man. Voice, great one of the voice. legends from Back to the Future, man. Legends. How you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Wow, that's what a great voice. Oh, what a yeah, great man. voice for radio. Oh, I, I've honestly been getting told that more and more this and past you year. You have a great face for TV, but a great voice for radio. Oh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Scholar and gentleman. So, I uh, wanted to talk about some of the amazing stuff, dude, about, like, first off, being a Back to the Future franchise, dude, how epic was well, that? Well, you know, I'm, I'm actually only one of six people in all three Back to the Future films. Very fortunate to be able to hold that title. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, it, it was great. You know, I don't know if you know this or not, but I was actually the original choice for Biff. Really? Yeah. So okay. They, so they wanted Michael J. Fox originally, and um, he was doing a TV show called Family Ties. And yeah. this is all it's online, you can look it up. And the producers wouldn't um, let him out of the contract. So they kept looking for someone. Meanwhile, I was first choice. I went back five times to audition. And um, they found Eric Stoltz. Now, Eric and I were the same height. So that right. originally let me out. I'm, I'm no longer in the running. They kept looking for uh, someone for the role of Biff. They found Tom Wilson. Um, they offered me a smaller role in one of his, as one of his gang members, so I skinhead. Uh, I took the role. We filmed for about a month and a half, and they realized Eric wasn't right for the role. They fired him, brought in Michael, worked out a deal with the producers, and the rest is history. That's but, awesome. but on the DVD commentary, part one, Bob Gale, who wrote and produced the movie, says, had Michael been cast originally, J.J. Cohen would have been Biff. That, so that is epic, man. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you very that much. That is a trip. Thank you very much. So back then, filming the movie versus now, man, did you ever have any idea like this was going to be a classic? No, like nobody, an nobody, hit? nobody knows. Nobody knows. I mean, because with a lot of those, they filmed them back to back, didn't they? The two and three they did. Yep. But you know, when you're when you're involved in any kind of uh, movie. I mean, you hope it's going to do as well as it can, but oh, you, ha you have no way to foresee something like this. I mean, the movie, for example, uh, Fright Night. Right. I always use this as an example, because <coughs> I used to represent one of the kids that was in that. Um, um, it made $24.9 million. That's a lot of money, right, yeah, in the 80s. Pretty decent. And uh, what happened was, so it's while it's a lot of money, at the same time, Back to the Future made 388 million. Back to the Future 2 made 344 million. And Back to the Future 3, the loser of the group, if you will, made 244 million. And so, um, just, I mean, it was just huge, huge, huge movie. That's awesome. Huge. That's that pretty cool stuff. <laughs> One of the things I actually wanted to talk about in X-Men, if it's cool with you, dude, is. Uh, a lesser known film compared to Back to the Future. Because, yes. I mean, Jesus, dude, 976 Evil. Ah. As soon as I saw that on the poster behind us, I was like, holy shit, I've watched that movie. <laughs> that was one of my favorite horror movies growing up, man. The That's kid funny. with the payphone yes. keeps calling in to get advice, and it's warping his soul and his mind, it just is. corrupted him throughout the movie. It is. I can think of plenty of uh, phone numbers that I call that have that same effect right, but it's right. but it's not 976 <laughs> evil but um yeah well, that was that was a great cult well, classic well, i mean the, the kid was getting bullied and the he cool keeps calling for help and it just it corrupted that's him. right the cool thing about it was it was the directorial debut of robert england freddy krueger right. and we okay. actually had the same agent at the time and so uh he called me in i didn't have to read for the role i went in there and i told him what i wanted to do to the to with the character it's, it's this picture right here with the little blonde patch. Yeah. And what, what happened was I was doing, um, I was very much a method actor at that point. Right, right. And uh, I don't know how much you know about my whole career, but I worked with a lot of Academy Award winners. Kevin Costner and Steven Spielberg were uh, amazing stories. Did you ever see that episode? I am not. Back there? I am not. And you ever see Almost Famous? You oh, must yeah. have with this air. Almost Famous, come on. So Almost yeah. Famous. So Cameron Crowe directed that. And he directed Jerry Maguire. All right. Um, and then I, I was in uh, The Principal with Jim Belushi, but Lou Gossett Jr., another Academy Award winner from Officer and a Gentleman, he was in that. And so I had this great career. And with um, the 976 Evil, I was into, Marlon Brando was talking about, you know who Marlon Brando is, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Marlon Brando was talking about 
uh, how he was using animals to help him with characterization. And so while this was going on, like for example, he did Streetcar Named Desire and he used a gorilla. Uh, and so when, he, when he's walking, he walks a little like a gorilla. When he's, when he's eating, he's eating like a little bit like yeah, a gorilla. Yeah. So I read this script and I looked at Marcus and I was like, God, this guy's really a skunk, man, with the things he does. So that's why I did this skunk look to my hair. Oh, and man. I also had a bowler hat on, I had an earring. And, but there were, these things were all created because of this animal idea. Um, anyway, it was, uh, it was um, it's, you know, 80s horror. And if you like 80s horror, Dude, uh, you're gonna love. 80s did it the best. You're gonna man. love. That's what. That's what. See, I was never a horror have guy. All, all I, horror's kind of scary. CGI effects me. back then. You just had no. to have some, you know, a cardboard big shit. Yeah, <laughs> some, <laughs> some ketchup being squirted go. out, and you were good to go. But um, uh, working with Robert and being on the set with Leslie Dean and. Uh, um, the Wills like got called back. When you you were also on the sequel of that too, right? No, no, no. I wasn't because I got killed in the first one. And that was another thing, too, just so you know, with Hollywood, you know, because I was a method actor. Um, the original script had me being thrown off the roof. Right. And I thought, okay, cool, it's a, it's a human way to die. And then, of course, they did exactly what I didn't want them to do, which was Complete. what wound up happening was I get killed by the little monster, you know, who's, who's this high on me, you know, and uh, chasing me around and getting me in the bathroom, and then now I'm dead, you know. <coughs> but the blood, the <coughs> excuse me, one second. <coughs> the blood curdling scream that I do at the yeah. end of the movie, I do it twice. First of all, I never knew I could get that high. That's number one. Number two, because of that scream, I was actually in. I actually named in the top twenty-five <laughs> scream kings. Oh, on, what? on IMDb.com. That is so, awesome. Y'all make sure to check that out. Mom would be proud. Um, and uh, yeah, because who doesn't want their son to be Scream King? But um, uh, yeah, hey, no. horror movie industry, that's, that's pretty it. cool stuff. <laughs> well, man, we cannot keep you out here all day. We got to let you hey, make I your money. It so but much. before we do hop off here, man, is there a place to let the fans know, social media wise? Be able to uh, find you, hit yeah, that yeah, button yeah. For you. I got a fan page, uh, J period, J period, Cohen, um, with the periods. Uh, there's about 20,000 people up there that put up with me and. We do a lot of fun stuff on there and um, humorous stuff and inspirational stuff and uh, updates on where I'm going to be, what's happening, what we're going to be doing. There's going to be a lot of cool things doing happening in the next few years. Next year is actually going to be my last year doing cons and appearances. But after that... Well, I'm glad we got to meet you this um, year. It's kind of a teaser, but uh, after that, there's going to be some really things that are just going to totally blow up uh, that have nothing that... that uh, I don't want to give it away, but... Uh, All right, no, no spoilers. Yeah, though. no spoilers. But, um, uh, yeah, last year's going to be my... Next year's going to be my last year doing cons and appearances for oh, other people. Uh, Did I give it away by adding that? No, nah, no. Nah, you're you're okay. still good. Okay, good. No spoilers yet. Good. Well, make sure to get out here to this event. And remember, this is the only show that has a clean bill of health from Dr. Doom, Dr. Strange, Dr. Fate, and Dr. Who. We will see you in the multiverse. Gotta run. <laughs>